Janice Campaign is a grassroots group of tireless and committed people who are deeply interested in working in the field of domestic violence public policy, partnering with other advocates, victims, the criminal justice system, and lawmakers. This campaign encourages the development of effective state and national public policy. The campaign's goal is to move the issues of domestic violence to the top of the political agenda and support legislation that enhances victim services, supports prevention and treatment programs, and provides true accountability and justice. Janice Cam Campaign's mission is to promote new and effective legislation and other government actions that secure safety and justice for victims of domestic violence. Today, I'm happy to announce that we have nearly 50 volunteers from around the country, actually around the world, who have joined our campaign and who will be serving as advocates for Janice Campaign. These include staff members, a legal team, college interns, and volunteers of all kinds. Just to mention a few, Liz Sweeney, who cannot be here, uh, will be our first Kansas State Coordinator and Lobbyist. She's from Lawrence, Kansas. Zai Lu is our International Policy Advocate, and she's from, I'm going to mispronounce this, Yangzin, China. Tisha Beaker, the young lady sitting in the middle of the room, is one of our administrative assistants from Colby, Kansas. Matt Peters, our webmaster from Beloit, and so on. Janice Campaign is committed to making a difference in the field of public policy. Along with our advocates and other supporters, we are looking into a number of legislative possibilities for this state and for this country. We continually support the Batters Intervention Initiative for this state. We support the domestic violence tag legislation in Kansas. We support new and innovative ways that sexual response, sexual assault response care can take place in rural Kansas. We will likely be involved in t uh, dating violence education. We are also have our legal team looking at landlord tenant laws that harm victims of domestic violence. These are just a handful of things that are starting our initiative. We're going to spend the last few minutes of our presentation talking about two of the most important initiatives that we would like to talk about today. The first of those is something that I learned a great deal about from Jana. She learned a great deal about from Sarah Jane Russell. Mostly what I learned from Jana is sexual assault is all too frequent. All too frequent in this state. It is an issue that had never touched me personally. I just didn't know I didn't know. So as Kurt mentioned, one issue that we are looking at in great depth is the issue of response to sexual assault, particularly in rural areas. We have learned that in our own community of Hayes, rape victims who are willing to press charges must be transported 90 miles one way to be examined by a certified nurse. We are thrilled that our county recognizes the need for a professional exam but we are appalled that victims from our community must travel nearly 200 miles to have that done. We believe for a community that houses a regional hospital and a four-year Regents University, this is totally unacceptable. We will be working hard to assure a more focused and timely community response in our community and across the state. Janice Campaign strongly recommends that Kansas lawmakers this session pass the domestic violence tag bill. This legislation requires that a domestic violence tag be placed on all legal documents associated with a criminal act that is based on an intimate relationship where there is a pattern of control, whereby holding the offenders accountable for committing an act of domestic violence. 
Having the DV tag is especially important as offenders often repeat their crimes against victims. Therefore, this legislation will encourage sanctions to be put in place before violate, or violence escalates. This bill also in its current form requires that the courts order assessment of the offender and recommend intervention and treatments of the offender. Again, again, our hope is to reduce and eliminate repeat offenses and end the cycle of domestic violence. While we understand that this legislation alone will not stop domestic violence, it is only a step. But we believe it is an important step in the right direction in reducing repeated domestic violence. One thing we are very sure about, doing nothing, accepting the status quo is unacceptable. Let me conclude our formal part of our press conference by saying several things. First, in our work over the last several months, I've come up with a strong belief that domestic violence is often a hidden act in our communities. Too often it is seen as a private matter between partners. It is not. Let me be clear, it is not. Domestic violence is a public issue. Domestic violence is a public crime that demands a public response. It is our deep desire to play a significant role in breaking the cycle of domestic violence and to be a catalyst for true social change. Our goal is that, is that through our work and effort, we can ever so slightly alter the course of history. What drives Christy and I and our advocates is a belief in a simple statement mentioned by Dr. King many years ago. After Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama, someone asked the great civil rights leader, how long will it take, the person said, the struggle for civil rights. Dr. King climbed on the back of a flatbed truck and said these famous words, not, lo not long, not long, because the arm of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Christy and I will carry on, carry on until our strength is all gone. Thank you very much for attending and we'd be glad to entertain any questions you may have. Thank you very much.